All right, traders, within this video, I'm going to give you an updated price action analysis on the SPY. This is going to give you a much better understanding on when to be bullish, when to buy the call options, when to be bearish, and when to buy the put options. I also ended up rocking put options within Trader Society on Friday, ended up having another green day, but I did make some mistakes and I gave back a lot of profit towards the end of the day. So I'm going to be walking you through that trade recap as well. But in terms of my entries, for the SPY, it was absolutely phenomenal. And I was doing very, very well in the morning, locking in profits, but then I got a little bit too greedy towards the end, aiming for a bigger side of the move, and I gave back a lot of the profit. So with that being said, I'm gonna walk you through this price action analysis in this trade recap. Also, I'm gonna be posting some new videos very, very soon. One's gonna be a video on Prog stock, another one is gonna be a video on BBIG stock, and then I'm also gonna have a video on the top stocks that I'm watching into this short week. So let's get right into the price action analysis. So in terms of the SPY, as you can see, this is the daily chart. Um, you guys know from a macro point of view, I've been bearish on the SPY. I've been anticipating this gap fill at $455 right here. Um, you can see there, there was a gap to fill right here at 454 and eventually came right back down to fill the gap. Once it filled the gap, it had a nice reversal it shot back up. So with that being said, I'm still bearish from the macro point of view. I'm going to be giving you the updated price action analysis here in a moment um, in terms of the trade recap. We had a very good, from an educational point of view, guys, I would really encourage you to watch that live trading stream that we did in Trader Society. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you, um, it's going to be the second link in the description. That's the live trading session that we did for members only on Friday. So if you really want to learn and get a better understanding on how I trade the SPY and how I profit from it in terms of the put options, um, I'd really encourage you to watch that live stream because it's a really good lesson. Um, but in terms of the SPY, what I was looking at on Friday was I was checking the history and you know, I've been anticipating the gap fill at 455. I've been bearish from the macro. So obviously I'm going to be looking for opportunities to buy puts towards resistance with tight stops. So I was looking at this history and I noticed how SPY previously closed at 466. Um, it had a massive gap down and it went down all the way to 456.6, nearly filling that gap. And then it started to have a reversal into that day. So I was looking at that pattern and I was recognizing, wow, SPY has a lot of downside potential. So with that being said, when I saw this massive gap down, I told myself, I'm going to do what's best and I'm going to wait for the gap to fill. And then once that gap fills, if we see bearish confirmations such as signs of resistance it's struggling to break out it's having fake outs it's forming bearish wicks it's forming um dojis i'm gonna buy the put options and i literally bought these puts nearly towards the low in terms of like the low price of the contracts i got in literally at the best price i remember i got with i got with the january um 14th expiration on the put options and those i believe the low day was at like 150 i got in at like 179 I got a phenomenal entry on those. In terms of when I got in, you can watch the live trading stream, um, but I got in like right around right around here, I believe. Right around here or right around here, um, maybe even right around here. It was right between this zone. Basically, as soon as it filled the gap and I saw there was a Gravestone Doji, I believe I literally got in like right around here towards this uh, 10 a.m., to 10 15 to 10 20 a.m period literally towards the top so i basically recognize the pattern that okay i'm bearish for the macro point of view so if this was just at 456 in the pre-market and it already dropped into the 459s very very quickly that's an overreaction so if we get a gift that this just rips back up in the morning and fills that gap and then we see it's struggling to break out it's reacting as a resistance level so in terms of confirmations to buy puts, as soon as it fills the gap, study how it reacts. Right here, it fills the gap, bearish candlestick selling off. Right here, best confirmation. If you see these gray candlesticks, these dojis, these are trend reversal candlesticks. I'm using trend reversal candlesticks with a trend reversal strategy, a gap close reversal strategy combined with the dojis. That's your best confirmation. If you see these dojis forming at these previous closing prices when these gap fills, the stock is most likely gonna have a short-term reversal. And you could see as soon as it had that, you know, that um gravestone doji, it had a very, very nice sell-off. 
within this period of time with puts that expire on friday you can make a quick 30 to 50 percent very very quickly and then also in terms of the squeeze trigger the squeeze was beginning to end it becomes bearish when you see these blue these dark blue marks coming in this blue mark here coming in this dark blue mark coming in that's where it gets very very bearish this has been an indicator that i've been um beginning to use i'm seeing a lot of value in it um along with my previous closing price this one i've been using literally since I was like 15. Um, this is a new indicator that I'm starting to use. I don't really use that many indicators. Um, but with that being said, when I saw this overreaction, and you know I'm bearish from a macro point of view, this spike is going to be a gift to buy puts. And that's exactly what I did. And I was locking in profits along the way, making a quick 30 to 40%. And then I was rebuying puts towards spikes. I ended up rebuying puts around here towards 463, around here towards 463. Um, you can watch the live train stream as well. It's the second link in the description. But then in terms of where I went wrong, so I was taking profits along the way. I even at one point, I sold 33% of my position literally right around here at 460, 62 towards the low of day. But then here's where things started to go wrong. I got a little bit too greedy and I was aiming for the bigger side of the move. And if you try to aim for the big win, you're either going to hit big or you're going to you're going to give back the majority of your profits um if you don't do a good job of managing your risk along the way while you're trying to capture the move so in the beginning i was doing an extremely good job of getting phenomenal entries and locking in profits along the way towards the end i got really confident and a little bit too greedy and i held like 60 percent of my position that i wasn't scalping and i ended up giving back a lot of profits i got out like right around here towards 463 which is basically my initial entry when i re-entered the puts so i gave back a lot of profits and it was a small loss in that part but from an overall day i was up very very nicely like from an overall day like i was still green up nicely on spy because of the scalps i had and the profit taking when it hit 460 60 so overall it was a good day it could have been a lot better um but if you're aiming for the bigger side of the move like i'm looking at the history i'm saying this can go to 455 today but it's potentially right you have to have a max risk of what you're willing to risk and in this situation you know i locked in 33 percent of profits when this hit um like i said 460 62 so i was still holding two-thirds of my position left and i I decided to, you know, either aim for the big win or just get out break even or small loss. And that's what ended up happening to small loss on that. But overall, it was still a green day. Um, and in terms of another mistake I had with AMC, AMC, I made a very, very bad mistake on this one. I did not wait for that gap fill on AMC. I did not wait for the gap fill. There was a gap fill at 2066. I told you guys the best level was 2050 to 2080 in between that range. I missed out on the opportunity of buying the puts. It was sitting out resistance right here at 2050. I was watching like 12 stocks. That's another thing. I'm going to lower my watch list and just have a couple stocks instead of 12 because I would have crushed this one at market open. As soon as I saw it's reacting as a resistance level right here towards pre-market highs and it forms the doji, that's confirmation to get in and it's very close to the gap fill but i ended up actually chasing this in the morning as soon as i got in i was up 25 percent. i tried to lock in profits very very quickly like i chased this i went with the key breakdown at like a lower 20 dollar level like 50 cents away from my ideal entry i was up 25 percent in one minute i tried to get out i tried to lock in profits it quickly went against me and then i ended up losing 60 percent on that but i went with a fairly small position so what you have to understand in terms of that like these are extremely cheap contracts that expire in the same day i'm always trading a lot lighter on a Friday because the returns are a lot bigger. The percentage returns are going to be a lot bigger and the percentage losses are going to be a lot bigger as well. Um, so on a Friday, typically I'm looking to get stopped out at like 30 to 40%. Um, if it's not a Friday, then usually 20% max. And then the wins could be exponential. They could be, you know, one, two, three, four X, depending on what contracts, if it's part of the money, stuff like that. Um, but anyways, in terms of, in terms of the spy. So with that being said, what I want you to understand in this particular situation, and we had a lot of members do very, very well on those lists to spy on. This guy recently joined, his puts were up 140% to 100%. Uh, we also had people crushing it with um, put options. We were mainly rocking puts towards the market open towards previous closing prices. Um, he did it with PT on, you could do it with other stocks, AK profit on that. 
Um, like I said, Webull cash accounts are key with options. Make sure you have a cash account if you don't have above 25K if you're trading options. Um, and this guy, he's been consistently killing it. He ended up playing the gap fill play on BBIG um, up over 13%, 8.5K. So I'm going to make a separate video on BBIG. But in terms of this video, where do I see SPY moving forward? So this is what I want you to understand. At the moment, I'm sitting on the sidelines again, looking for opportunities. So like I said, this was a great opportunity. I'm bearish on the macro. It's on track to fill the gap at 455. It sold off six points of the pre-market. If you get that rip back up to six points very, very quickly, overreaction on the crash, overreaction on the spike, confirmation to buy puts when the gap fills and you see the reversal, you see the resistance, you see the indicator turning dark blue like that. All great confirmations to get in. So I crushed on that. So I got to wait for the pre-market to really identify where I'm getting back in towards market open like I did on the following day. Um, but with that being said, in terms of right now, what I could tell you is, you know, currently sitting on the sidelines and from a chart point of view, this is what I'd like you to understand right now. So this is key. This is key right here. This 466 level, this 466 level is key. For the bulls to really take control for the week when the markets open on Tuesday, they need to break above 466 and turn it into support. That's what needs to happen. It needs to react as a support level. If they cannot turn 466 into support, we're really going to be on track to fill that gap at 455 this week. So 466 is key for the bulls. If they can turn into support, they break above it, they turn into support. We are on track for a run this week to 470 to 472. That would be the target. Now, if they can't turn 466 into support, it starts breaking down. The bears take complete control once this goes back under this previous closing price. If 464.50 cracks and that reacts as a resistance level, this will be on track to fill that gap 455 by the end of the week. So that's your key confirmations. So in terms of macro bullish, bulls need to turn 466 into a support level they need to break above turn into a strong support level macro bullish run potentially to 470 to 472 for the bears to have that macro control they need to crack this 464.50 turn it into resistance gap from 455 on track to fill the gap below right so in terms of the best price like i said to swing trade buy spy call options is to wait for the gap to fill at 454.98 cents right so that's what i'm going to be looking for i'm going to be looking at those key levels see how it reacts in terms of tuesday right um overall as of now you know, maybe like 472 at best. Like, it's just, I really don't think the Bulls are going to have some strong sort of move. Like, they can run it back to 472, but overall, I still think we're going to be on track to fill that gap at 455. Um, but we'll see. We got to wait and see how it reacts, and we got to see what the chart is looking at, looking like in the pre market. But yeah, that was a phenomenal opportunity, a phenomenal setup on spot. So, that's my thoughts. That's my analysis. Um, like I said, it gets much better understanding, much better towards pre-market to market open within trader society like I did on Friday. Like we literally bought the puts at the top guys and I just, I just kept scalping. I was doing so well scalping them, doing so well taking profits. And then, you know, I had two thirds of my position left, decided to let profits ride and I gave back a lot of my profits, but I still went on the green. And that's what's gonna happen if you try to aim for the big moves. And in terms of me aiming for the big move, it was really influenced by a lot of previous trades that I've been in on the SPY where I've gotten phenomenal entries, um, but I sold way too soon. Like there was recently a SPY put I got and I could have made 400%. I got out at 52%. So I think what had a lot of influence in that confidence and greed was simply just being in so many positions recently, like the Tesla put options. I sold those way too soon. Could have made like, gosh, I was in at $4. I was selling at 12 those went to $80. So I think that's what had a lot to do with it. And if you are going to take the risk to aim for the big side of the move, you have to always lock in some profits at key levels. That's why I sold one third of my position right around here when this was trading at like 
461 to 460 50 because that was a key support level with huge upside potential and the chart history also showed it can potentially spike back but i was seeing another pattern that had influence i was also recognizing that wow this key support has turned into resistance that's very very bearish but then the bulls came back towards the end of the day so just remember if you're going to aim for that big overall move you have to always lock in profits so in terms of profit taking I like to take profits in terms of 33 to 50%. So when I'm locking in profits, I like to take um, one third to you know one half. So like 33% to 50% um, profits at a key level. And then I'll look to let the rest ride, right? And then sometimes I'll just take 67% of the profits off and then just let the other 33% ride, right? That could be another good thing. Um, but for beginners, I would focus more on like, a 50% to 67% profit take on the first key level. And then if you want to let the rest ride, let the rest ride. Because guys, with options, just a small position left of like 30% of what you had, say you bought you know, three contracts, just letting one ride, it can turn into a substantial gain. I bought those Tesla puts towards the top at $4. That $400 contract turned into $8,000 at one point. So if I would have just let a couple ride, like it could have exploded, right? So if you're in a situation where you get a phenomenal entry and you know, you're know you seeing this macro side of the move where things can really play out, then you might want to let just a little ride out and then set a max risk on where you're comfortable with getting out if you're wrong for the macro, whether that's towards break even or whether that's towards like you're up 10% or 20% or whatever it is, right? So that's my thoughts. That's my analysis. I will see you guys within the next video.